We've completely examined the Hopf bifurcation from the point of view of equilibria. You go from spiral sink to spiral source. But remember, there's more to dynamics than simply equilibria. So let's think. Let's write out that system. Take a careful look at what happens to the linear term when mu equals zero. In that case, what we have is a rotation matrix. Oh, that's interesting. And if I look at the nonlinear terms, I see prominent quantity x squared plus y squared. That is screaming out to me polar coordinates. So let's take this system in the xy plane and convert it to a system in polar coordinates. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we write out the relations for polar coordinates, that is r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and tangent of theta equals y over x. Then if we apply implicit differentiation to both of these, and that takes a little bit of work, differentiating, expanding things out, then what we can do in the end is write this as a system where instead of dx dt dy dt, we have dr dt and d theta dt. That's what we want. So to get started, if we take dr dt, we write out the expression for that in terms of r, x, y, dx dt, dy dt, substitute in for dx dt and dy dt the terms from the normal form. We have to do a little bit of algebraic simplification, but in the end, we get something so nice. It turns out that dr dt equals mu times r plus c times r cubed. Doing the exact same thing on the angular coordinate on d theta dt gives us that d theta dt equals omega, that constant. Now this is really, really helpful. And why is that? Well, take a look. Take a look at this system that we have derived in polar coordinates. This is a decoupled system. dr dt doesn't depend on theta. d theta dt doesn't depend on anything. It's a constant. So what that means is that we can analyze this very, very easily. So in the angular coordinate, what do we have? We have d theta dt equals a constant. It's spinning, either counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on the sine of omega. What about the radial coordinate? Ah, here we have equilibria. I can factor out an r. That means that r equals zero is an equilibrium. Oh, but wait, that is radial. That's where x and y are both zero. That's the origin. Ah, so that is nothing new. We already knew the origin was an equilibrium. But look, when we factor out that r, we get quantity mu plus c r squared. That means we can solve for r equals square root of negative mu over c. That also is an equilibrium in the radial variable. Now, notice we're not taking plus or minus square root of that stuff. Why? Because the radius has to be positive in polar coordinates. But what's really interesting is that we have a bifurcation at mu equals zero, right? When mu equals zero, then that second equilibrium collides with the first one. Let's think about this using tools from one dimensional dynamics. Let's say, for simplicity, that c is equal to negative one so that in the radial variable, what we have is dr dt equals mu times r minus r cubed. Hey, wait, I think I've seen a system like that before. This, this reminds me of a pitchfork bifurcation, a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. And indeed, for values of mu that are positive, we have a stable equilibrium at square root of mu. We have that unstable equilibrium at zero. Now, what is this? What does this mean? I'm always moving in the angular direction and in the radial variable, I am typically converging to the stable equilibrium. What is this? This is called a limit cycle. This is an attracting periodic orbit that is born in the bifurcation as mu passes through zero. That stable spiral sink at the origin becomes unstable, but that's local. Globally, everything is still getting sucked towards the origin. So that stable and that unstable compete and a limit cycle and attracting periodic orbit is born. 
Visualizing this in the plane is very, very helpful. Before the bifurcation, that radial coordinate is just getting sucked in linearly. But as you get right at the bifurcation, those linear terms die off. And you're left with those cubic terms that are not coming in so fast and past the bifurcation. You have this very, very tiny limit cycle which grows as you increase mu. In fact, that radius grows like square root of mu, which means it just pops up. That's what a hop bifurcation looks like.